Welcome to Timber Cove, home of heroes. Timber Cove becoming the home of astronauts, how did that happen? It was really just kind of sheer luck that it became the home of four of the original seven. John Glenn, Scott Carpenter, uh, Gus Grissom, and Wally Shira. Once the astronauts moved in, people started coming to try to find out where they lived, and they'd go through the mailboxes <laughs> looking at people's mail to, to find Glenn or Carpenter or Shira or Grissom. The second Apollo class of astronauts lived here. When Jim Lovell returned from Apollo 13, after that dramatic rescue, people lined the Esplanade and they had American flags in hand and as his car passed, people would reach out and touch the car. They, they lined in behind him and walked him home. They lived right over here on Lazywood. They call it the Lovell's Level House because it's a split level two-story. Even upstairs, the upstairs has a drop down. This was the layout when the Lovells were living here. Nothing's really been moved since then. Mrs. Lovell had the whole brick over the stove and I think because they had so many parties they needed to have the open concept. There's a picture in Life Magazine of Mrs. Lovell watching what's going on yes. with Apollo 13. Where did that happen? Uh, that happened right here. And um, They had the TV in that little alcove right there. The doorbell rang when I was home doing dishes one evening and um, I opened the front door and, and the two people were standing there and the gentleman goes, you don't know me, but I used to live here. I was like, okay, please come in your house. <laughs> and that was amazing. So we got to have a dinner with them here and um, you know, just talk about the heyday. My husband was the chief of the uh, technical services division at uh, NASA. Your dad's the man who made the flag fly on the moon. Yeah. <laughs> we had this cool little sketch of uh, how he dreamed up to do a flag on the moon, and uh, and then they created it. And you know the classic thing is, well, the flag on the moon must be fake because there's no wind on the moon, but it's got a little pole that goes across, and it, you have to extend it out. And uh, so it's a cool thing that he was a part of that uh, that we get to experience every day. So I swam in the Conrad's pool across the street, fell asleep at their house a number of times. Scott Carpenter would teach kids to dive from the diving board. Uh, the Seas lived down here and the Grissoms and the Shiraz lived down there. So all those names from the space program were all around us. One week this guy's mowing his yard, the next week he's on the moon. You know, a very, very real person you know, is up there on the moon. I think a cool thing about this neighborhood is it reminds people that astronauts were just like you and me. Absolutely. They mowed their lawn, they went shopping, they got together and had parties, and in between they became great American heroes. They were selected for their gifts, their talents, their intellect, and their families came along for that ride. We've been here over 50 years now, and uh, it just gets better every year. <laughs> It's a great community to live in and uh, it definitely is special.